Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this video we're going to get our NPCs moving toward the player, and we'll also add some functionality so that you can cause them to be triggered when you move within a certain area, and then stop following you when you leave that area. Let's get started. Now for this to work, you are going to need an NPC, so I've got an empty game object here, which has a sprite, a capsule collider 2D, a rigid body, as we'll be using rigid body physics for movement, and an animator. If you haven't already set up your animator, don't worry, I'll show how to do that a little later on. With that, we can create our first C Sharp script. We'll call this one cutscene element underscore NPC move to player. I always like to start by removing the start and update methods. And if you're using our full system, you will want to make sure that this inherits from cutscene element base. Driving our script from the base just gives us access to the public override void called execute, and we don't need the base here. All right, let's create some variables here. So we'll start off with a serialized private rigid body reference, which we'll just call RB. We'll make another serialized private variable. This one will be a float called speed. And with just those variables, we can get things started. Let's add back our update method, where we can just tell our rigid body that its velocity should be equal to a new vector two. Now for the X value of our velocity, we just want to make it equal to our speed. And the Y, we don't want to do anything. So we're just going to tell the rigid body to keep its Y velocity. With that done, things should already be testable. So let's create our cutscene event. I'll just make an empty game object. We'll call it cutscene move to player. At this point, we'll add the script we just wrote. Make sure to drag in your NPC's rigid body and also give it some speed. I'm going to go with five. Just to make sure you're on the right track, we can hit play. You'll see the NPC move to the right. And if I changed that speed value to a negative number, he would start moving to the left. All right, so far so good. So next up, we want to get our NPC moving in the correct direction. So let's make a private integer called facing direction. We can then take that facing direction and just multiply it by speed. Of course, our NPC doesn't yet know what direction he should be facing. So let's make a serialized private transform reference to his target. We can then come down into our update method and we're going to make our facing direction equal to, and now we're just going to ask if the rigid body's transform.position.x, so just the x value of the NPC, is greater than the x value of his target. Here we'll make that into a question with a question mark. And essentially if his X is greater than the target's X, that means he's on the right, which means he should be facing left. So if that's true, it'll be negative one, we'll put a colon. And if it's not true, we'll put a one, which means he's on the left and should be facing right. Now we can just click on our cutscene, make sure to drag in our target. I'm gonna put my player character in there. Now when we get in the game, you can see that the NPC is indeed following us wherever we go. Of course, there's a few problems. He's gyrating strangely when he reaches the player and he's not facing the right direction. So let's fix that. So first off, we're going to create a private float here, which will be the X offset. And down below, I'm just going to add a little code note here to keep things organized. And next, what we're just going to do is check to see if, and we'll borrow this code here. So again, if the NPC's X position minus the X position of our target. So here we're just finding the difference between the two. And if that is greater than our offset, we need to move. I'm also just gonna add an else statement here so that if our NPC is within that one unit of his target, his velocity will be set to zero, which will stop him. At this point, there's one little problem and that is just that if the NPC is on the left of his target, he won't actually recognize that his distance from it is greater than the offset because it'll be a negative value. We can fix this by just setting the difference, so the subtraction here, to be mathf.absolute. All right, and now our NPC is indeed stopping one unit from the player, no matter what side we're on. Now we still have a few things to do. We need to get him facing the correct direction. We want to animate him and also create an exit and enter trigger. Let's do that next. Now to fix the NPC's rotation, you'll notice that now when I'm facing left, I have a Y rotation of 180, and then when I make that zero, he faces right. So let's build that into our code. If we come down into update just below where we set our facing direction. We can tell our NPC's rigid body that his rotation should be equal to, and here we'll use another of these ternary operators where we have a question. We'll say, is our facing direction equal to one? If so, then we want to set the quaternion Euler to zero. However, if his facing direction is negative one, meaning he's facing left, then we'll set the quaternion Euler for his rotation to zero, 180, zero, which will face him left. 
Now, no setup required, we can just test that and he should now be facing the correct direction. At this point, we're ready to animate. So you'll wanna make sure that you have an animator and I'll just show you how mine is currently set up. But really, I just have an idle and run state here. And I've just set idle as the default state. I've then added a parameter, a bool in this case, called is walking, and then right clicked to make a transition from idle to run. Now, if we click on that transition, you'll see that if is walking is true, we go to run. And then I made a transition going the other way where if is walking is false, we go back to idle. You'll notice that I've also set the exit time to unclicked and there's a zero duration so that these transitions happen immediately. Now all we need to do is make this is walking parameter actually get changed in our script. So first of all, let's just make a serialized private reference to our animator. We'll call this anim. And we're already detecting when the player is walking. So this is actually fairly easy to do. We can just come down here below where we're checking for whether or not his distance from the target is greater than the offset. And if it is, meaning he's walking, we'll just set the animator's bool for is walking to be true. We'll then just come down here into this else statement. And along with stopping him, we're also going to set his is walking to false. Now at this point, our update method is starting to get a little bulky. So I'm actually just going to copy all of this movement script and put it into a private void move method. We'll then just add move into our update so that it's constantly being called. This time around, there is some setup. We need to make sure to drag our NPC into the animator box here so that we get access to his animator. With that done, we now have a nicely animated NPC running toward the player and then going into idle once he's close. All right, all we need now is some triggers as you'll see that he currently chases us forever right now. Now this is the part where we're gonna integrate at this cutscene element in with the rest of our system. To do that, we're gonna add our cutscene handler. We'll also add the initiator, which is in charge of making the cutscene actually start. You'll notice in the handler that there's references to a camera and virtual camera. We do not actually need those right now. However, let's take a look at our initiator. Here you'll see that we have this on trigger enter method. And essentially whenever a player enters its trigger, it calls the next element from our cutscene handler. So what we just wanna do is restrict all of our movement so that it only happens after this element has been called. So to do this, we're just gonna make a private bool here called is moving. And then we're gonna come down into update and just encapsulate everything inside of a if is moving bool. So now we just need to actually toggle that bool. To do that, we're gonna come into execute here. Now, in order for that to work, we do need to add a collider here. I'll use a box collider 2D, which I'll set to is trigger. So you'll notice now when we start the scene, the NPC is just idling. However, once we move within the target range, he starts to follow us. However, we still have the problem that he's going to follow us forever. So to make the NPC stop following the player, we need to make this is moving bool toggle to false. To make this happen, we'll just head back into our cutscene element and we're gonna create an on trigger exit method. Here we'll check to see if it is in fact the player that has exited the collider. And if the player has done that, then we're gonna set is moving to false. We're also gonna tell our cutscene handler that it needs to play the next element. But we need to make sure that our anim's bool for is walking is in fact set to false at this point. It might also make sense to set his velocity to zero so that he doesn't drift like he's on ice once he's trying to stop. So I also wanna make it so that if the NPC actually gets to the target, that it moves on to the next part of the cutscene. And so here I'm gonna also add the cutscene handler dot play next element. Don't forget to just make sure that your player is indeed tagged as player. So with that done now, you can see that he reaches the player, stops following, and now he no longer follows as that cutscene element is done. Now let's just make this a little more interesting by making it part of a larger cutscene. So here I'm gonna add in a cutscene element of say camera zoom. Now for this to work, we'll need to add a target. So it's the player that I want to zoom in on. We'll give it a target field of view of about 20. So we're zooming in a fair bit and we'll keep our camera back about 10 meters at like it normally is. I'll make this happen over two seconds, let's say. Now, because I'm doing a camera zoom, I will need to go to my cutscene handler and just fill in the camera options. With that done, I can now trigger the cutscene event. The NPC will run towards me. When he gets close, he stops and it triggers the zoom. All right, things are working pretty nicely. 
I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like, subscribe, or just leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear any other elements you'd like to see in this system. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.